Hello and welcome to my first ever YouTube video on Edexcel's Astronomy GCSE. Today I'm going to explain how we know the size and distance for the Moon and the Sun. Now these are things that we know very accurately these days. This is the Earth and the Moon to scale. If we included the Sun to scale and at the correct distance, the Earth and Moon would be less than a pixel wide. This is why most astronomical diagrams are not drawn to scale. Now here are the standard GCSE astronomy figures for the distances and sizes we're going to be calculating today. You don't need to memorize these, they're all given to you in the examination fact sheet. They're not precise, they're rounded, these are the figures that Edexcel uses. So how do we know these numbers? We've had good estimates of these for over 2,000 years. The ancient Greeks figured them out with no telescopes, no computers, just naked eye observations, meticulous records, and a little bit of trigonometry. They determined the easiest sizes first, gradually building up on what they knew to figure out the rest. And we're going to start off with Eratosthenes, the chief librarian at Alexandria. And while he was there, around 200 BC, Eratosthenes read an account of a traveller to Syene, peering into a well at noon on the summer solstice, and seeing the sun reflected in the water. This meant that the sun must have been directly overhead at that time. Next summer solstice, Eratosthenes, still in Alexandria, set up a vertical stick, and measured the shadow cast by that stick at noon. There would be no shadow in Syene, he knew that, but at, a, at Alexandria, the sun was about seven degrees from vertical. Eratosthenes assumed that the Earth was a perfect sphere and that the sun's rays were parallel, which is pretty close to true. That meant that Alexandria was seven degrees north of Syene. That's about one fiftieth of a 360 degree circle. Now the distance from Alexandria to Syene was well known at the time from merchants and surveyors. It was about 5,000 stadia, which in today's figures is about 800 kilometers. So Eratosthenes just multiplied 800 kilometers by 50 to come up with a circumference for the Earth of 40,000 kilometers. Now that is very close to the correct number as we know it today. And using the circle formula 2 pi r, we get a diameter for the Earth of about 13,000 kilometers. So, now we know the size of the Earth, and we can move on to figuring out the size of the Moon. I'm going to show you two methods of finding this. Both of them rely on lunar eclipses. During every lunar eclipse, the Earth casts a round shadow on the Moon. By the way, this is how the ancients knew that the Earth is spherical. A flat, disc-shaped Earth would sometimes cast a round shadow on the Moon, but not every time. Now, this first method is the easiest, but it has less potential for accuracy. So what we do, we observe a lunar eclipse, we sketch it, and then we can see the shape of the Earth's shadow. We can draw in the complete circle of the Earth's shadow and compare it to the size of the Moon. And you should find that the Moon is about 27% the size of Earth, or around 3,500 kilometers in diameter. The more accurate method was first done by Eratosthenes. This is a little bit more complicated, so bear with me. The Earth casts a shadow behind it in space, but since the Sun isn't a point of light, it's slightly more spread out, it includes a fully shaded central part called the umbra and a partially shaded outer part called the penumbra. We need to determine four moments called umbral contacts and the times when they occur. These are when the moon enters or leaves the umbra so we can ignore the penumbra. First umbral contact is when the moon starts to enter the umbra. Second umbral contact is when the moon fully enters the umbra. Third umbral contact is when the Moon starts to leave the Umbra. And fourth umbral contact is when the Moon fully leaves the Umbra. And these are labelled on the lower picture here, U1, U2, U3 and U4. 
There are some example times shown on the screen. These times are taken from Edexcel's specimen paper 1. We're going to calculate the time taken to go from the first to the second umbral contact. This is how long it takes the moon to travel one moon's diameter, and in this case it's 93 minutes. We then calculate the time taken to travel from the first to the third umbral contacts. This is how long it takes the moon to travel one Earth diameter, 278 minutes. We then simply find the ratio of these, and we've got the ratio of the moon and Earth's diameter. In this case it's 1 to 3, so the Earth is about three times larger than the moon. The moon is just 13,000 kilometres divided by 3. That gives us about 4,300 kilometres. You may notice that's quite a bit higher than the number we had before. This method can give us more precise and more accurate results than the previous one, but it's quite difficult, especially back in Eratosthenes' day. The Earth's shadow is quite fuzzy and lunar eclipses don't usually involve a perfect alignment, which means that the moon won't go through the centre of the shadow. It'll go slightly towards the outside, altering our measurements. And in this case, we've slightly overestimated the size of the moon. Still, we've got the size of the moon now, and we can calculate its distance. We can find the angular size of the moon in the sky. It turns out to be about 0.5 degrees. We'd use a sextant these days, or something more advanced, but the ancient Greeks didn't actually have these. They used other methods to find the distance of the moon, which I'm not going to go through today. Now, with a little bit of trigonometry, the distance of the moon is 3,500 kilometres divided by the sine of 0.5 degrees. And that gives us 401,000 kilometres, pretty close to the accepted value of 380,000 kilometres for the Astronomy GCSE. Now we're done with the Moon, so let's move on to the Sun, where things are going to get a little bit trickier. This time we're going to look at another Greek astronomer, Aristarchus. He was actually the first person to suggest that the Earth orbits the Sun, but that's not relevant today. Now bear in mind that everything we've said so far assumes that the Sun's rays are parallel, and this would be true if the Sun was infinitely far away. It's not correct though. The Sun's a long way away, but it's not infinitely far away and the rays are not perfectly parallel. Because of this, Aristarchus realised that when the Moon is exactly half full, the Earth-Moon-Sun angle must be exactly 90 degrees, but the Moon-Earth-Sun angle must be less than 90 degrees, because the Moon-Sun-Earth angle can't be zero. Aristarchus estimated the Moon-Earth-Sun angle at half-moon. He did this by estimating the angle between the Sun and the Moon in the sky. The actual angle is 89.83 degrees, so very close to 90 degrees, that you need modern equipment to find the difference. Aristarchus's estimate, on the other hand, was 87 degrees, resulting in a distance of 2.5 million kilometres. That's much less than the true distance of 150 million kilometres. But his method was valid, and this remained the best estimate for several centuries. The trigonometry involved is a little bit more complex than we've seen, and you don't need it for the GCSE, so we won't go through it today. Now we've almost finished our table. And the next one's an easy one. Through a happy coincidence, the Moon and the Sun take up the same angular size in our sky, about 0.5 degrees. We know that they take up the same angular size because we experience total solar eclipses. Now this means that the ratio of the distance over the diameter is the same for the Sun as it is for the Moon. We know what that is for the Moon. 380,000 kilometres, that's the distance, divided by 3,500 kilometres, the diameter, that gives you about 108. So the Sun's diameter is 108th of its distance, and 150 million kilometres divided by 108 
gives you the diameter of the Sun 1.4 million kilometers. Now all these measurements are of course approximate and some of them were calculated very accurately thousands of years ago. A few of them, as we've seen, were still quite far off. Nevertheless, everything that I've discussed today, the methods and the maths involved were all sound. And there you have it. We've got the full distance and size information for the Earth, Sun and the Moon. And the only bit of advanced equipment you needed was a sextant. Now for the GCSE, you should be able to describe these methods and reproduce the calculations shown. But you don't need to memorize any numbers, they're all on the datasheet for you in the exam. Thank you for watching, goodbye and have an excellent day.